My name is Nicola Mars Barden and I'm an actor, director, workshop facilitator. I work for quite a few companies. I'm a social artist with Ray I Finch Company and at the moment I'm working as assistant director on their production of Blood Wedding. I'm also associate director for a theatre company in London called Kazoom and we work with um, young audiences creating playful theatre in unusual spaces. Um, and any other company that wants to hire me, really, so give us a job. I started performing in theatre, if I think about it, probably as a young kid. I was always putting on shows with my cousins and my sister for family and parents. You could always guarantee that every Christmas or birthday we'd, I'd write a show and kind of probably force my siblings and my cousins to perform it for family. And I kind of realised I had this passion and I loved the film Annie, and I'd always act scenes out with my sister. I was Annie, and she was Molly, of course. And, um, yeah, and, and I, I never had the chance to do youth theatre, because I, I come from Gloucestershire, and there weren't youth theatres that said they weren't accessible to disabled people, like they weren't in accessible buildings. So I kind of missed out on that. Um, and I didn't get into drama until studying A-level theatre studies at school. And I just absolutely loved it um, to the point where I was looking at becoming an educational psychologist doing my A-levels and picking what degree to do that I thought, you know what, I love drama and I went on to study at university. But again, being a disabled woman, I met barriers there. So it was kind of, you couldn't just get into drama schools because they didn't think, you know, you were you would be any good as a disabled person or they weren't accessible. But I managed to get into the University of Glamorgan in South Wales, which ironically is one, one of the steepest valleys in all of um, South Wales. Hence, I got a power wheelchair. Um, but that was great. That was three, three great years learning about drama. That was theatre and media drama, learning about television, radio as well. Um, and then from that, I went on and worked as an apprentice stage manager at the Nuffield Theatre in Southampton. Did that for about two and a half years, touring the country, driving a massive, big, white Mercedes Sprinter van with three actors and the sets in the back of the show. We toured about three shows. And then it got to work in the main house as deputy stage manager, assistant stage manager. And then after that, I was like, well, there's something inside me that still wants to have a go at this acting malarkey. And I made contacts with Grey Eye in London and through working with Grey Eye I got to meet other people and that's kind of how it's been for the last 12 years really, is just meeting new people and um, having those opportunities. My first acting job um, was actually with a company called Spare Tire Theatre Company based in London and it was, it was a tour of... Um, North London secondary schools, so it's completely thrown in at the deep end. And it was a play, quite issue based play, called Other People's Shoes. And it was a 45 minute drama, and we looked at issues of asylum seekers, homophobia, and disability discrimination, all in 45 minutes. And then we did um, a forum workshop that ran alongside that for about another hour and a half. Um, so that was that's a good 12 years ago now. The biggest barriers that I faced in getting work, I suppose, would be it, it, it varies. Sometimes it can be people's attitudes towards that they just see you as a, as a wheelchair user. You're never just as you as an actor. Um, they'll see the wheelchair and be like, you know, that character that you were playing, they're not disabled, therefore we're not going to see you because it's not disabled, you're not going to fit that role. So that's kind of their attitude um but also and also i suppose as well in, in this industry it's about how you look as well can sometimes be a barrier that sometimes you can look too disabled or maybe you sometimes don't look disabled enough um but then another barrier is i remember getting a casting for my agent and it was for dare i say it was for comic relief so i thought brilliant it'll all be accessible uh -huh. The casting was up like two flights of stairs and there wasn't a lift. And this was for like a massive charity. So I just had to refuse and say, 
can't go to the casting unless they want to come down and see me in the street. I can't actually get to it. I was uh, involved in the Paralympic opening ceremony, London 2012. Probably the um, the biggest gig of my entire life um, here on in. It was watched by about 70,000 people in the stadium and a television audience of about half a billion throughout the world. Um, and that, it was just amazing. It was something that I'll never forget. It's definitely once in a lifetime. Um, the chance to to be the lead role in that, to play Miranda, alongside Sir Ian McKellen, um, <clears throat> who was playing kind of my father figure in it, Prospero. Um, and then I had him on one side, and then as we were waiting to go on, I remember there's Sir Ian McKellen on one side, there's Professor Stephen Hawke in the other, then there's all these fantastic Paralympians around me, and it's it was just amazing. I still get goosebumps when I think about it now. Um, and that was that was such a fantastic experience and the chance to show the rest of the world how as Great Britain we really we really excel at kind of disability arts and disabled performance as well. So yeah, definitely once in a lifetime that was just that will always stay with me, just looking out at the stadium that night and just thinking I remember it's it's the bit where I fly up at the end to try and break the glass ceiling with my walking stick going up past this massive inflatable statue and um of Alison Lapper and I got up and I put my walking stick up in the air and I could hear I was like 30 meters above everyone which is quite high and I just hear this massive roar and applause and I just felt so proud and in that moment I was just like we've done it because it felt such uh, a real team of these 76 professional disabled performers plus this group of 3,000, 4,000 volunteers. We had shown the entire world what Great Britain is capable of. And yeah, it was amazing to be part of that. My one bit of advice for any disabled person looking to get into acting um, or theatre in general, I'd say... I would say go for it, follow your heart, because I think we all do it because we love it. And um, get out there, meet people, learn your trade. Um, sounds like my dad, learn your trade. <laughs> but really go to workshops, go and go to master classes, um, meet lots of people and just keep fighting. Um, and, and if your agent starts putting you up, just for disabled role, ask them why you can't be seen for other roles and meet casting directors, get to meet writers um, because I think writers are kind of people to be targeted. They can they can write roles for you, they can get plays created for us um, and start putting on your own work as well, whether that's even like a video on yourself, having your own YouTube channel or something, just get out there and get exposure.